Anderson. Uh, six-time winner, by the way, Fat, of the best comedian at the Melbourne Comedy wow. Festival. Will, nice to see six. you always. Thank you very much for having me back. I really appreciate it. Hey. Last year would have been my 25th year in a row, William, at the Melbourne Comedy Festival. It took a global pandemic to have me have a yeah. year off, but we're back. Yeah. Well, I was going to ask you that. Are you nervous? Because you've had a year off. Mm-hmm. And uh, even when you go and maybe talk at a function now, Jim, you well, forget no, fa- stories well, hello, and, and, you, and you're not sure how you're going to go. If they're your stories or someone else's stories, <laughs> yeah, exactly. you uh, Well, I was going to ask you that. You're not still telling that bloody story about when you got a sore back on a flight to Wagga or whatever it was. And... I am, actually. I've brought that show back. You have not. <laughs> I have, too. Mate, that's as bad Due as my rubber band. Due to popular band. demand, my friend. That, is, uh, that show is back. <laughs> he was on the little flight, Jim, and he got a sore back and he stood up. Then he had a fight with the host. I mean, I tell it better, but yeah. that, that is essentially the gist of A it. A lot better. <laughs> uh, do you get nervous about Willie? Uh, you know what I will say is, like, having a bit of time off, it was the first time that I'd had, because I had nearly a year off stage. So yeah. my job, this is what you realise very much about but the job of being a stand-up comedian is, you take away the audience, it's not actually a job. No. You are left with no <laughs> discernible skills. The only thing that convinces people yeah. it's a job is that other people go, that's a job. Yeah. We'll come and watch it. That validates it. But otherwise, I'm just a guy yelling random shit at people in the street. And so I suddenly realised how unemployable I actually was. So you go tonight or tomorrow night to the Adelaide uh, Tonight to the tonight. Adelaide uh, Is festival, that going to yep. be your first time back or have you done some gigs leading in? So I did Canberra a couple of weekends ago. Ooh, tell us about that. Yeah. Okay, so no, Canberra was great because th- here's the thing about theatres at the moment. No one really knows if you can still put on shows. We know that everything can change really quickly still. So the Canberra Theatre rang us up and they were like, hey, we've got a spare weekend and it turns out we can put on two shows, we'll, we'll charge you a dollar for the venue. Do you want to come down and do two shows? Oh, really? And so you're just like, okay, all right, well, I might as well. I'll roll the dice. I'll go down. And I, what I love though, is when you go to places like Canberra, it's like Western Australia. Hmm. They are not familiar with COVID. No. If you bring it up, they're like, hang on, run me through this. There's been 19 of them. I don't understand. I realized I hadn't seen any Victorians for a while, but I've quite enjoyed that. Oh, that's yeah. funny. You so love it. you would argue, Will, that never in our lives anyway, uh, have we needed to laugh more than right now. Mm. Yeah, you would argue that. I Unfortunately, would. the one thing I would say about that, JB, is that comedy is a super spreader. But <laughs> Because most of the venues yeah. that we still play as comedians, not particularly ventilated, <laughs> does not yeah. work as well outdoors, even though people have been trying that. Some people, Bill, tried drive-in shows. So what happens is you go up on stage yes. at a drive-in, oh, everybody right. comes in their cars and they listen uh, to the show. And if they like the joke, they either beep their horn or flash their lights. Oh. That's not no. fun. No. If no. somebody's no. beeping their horn or flashing their lights at you, you're like about to get run over. That is like a no. not a good feeling you want when you're doing stand-up comedy. That's not right. And you they got the masks audience. on in the audience? Some, no. some places still ask for masks, but in Adelaide and in Melbourne, it's going to be no masks at the moment. Because that's least. no good either. You can't laugh properly with a mask on. Well, you can't. Uh, I mean, I think, that, you know, just responsibly, you know, I may, maybe one in every 10 jokes won't be that funny, yeah. just yeah. so yeah. that people aren't, yeah. you know, yeah. just a COVID safe. Like it. Well, Adelaide, they've had bugger all. COVID to worry about either. So you wander in there and they haven't heard about it. Oh, that was, so I, that was where I was when it all went to pieces. Right. So uh, it was Friday the 13th. I remember it. Yes. They cancelled yes. the Grand Prix mm-hmm. and they cancelled the Melbourne International Comedy Festival. But all the comedians are still in Adelaide. We've still got two more shows to do at the Adelaide Fringe. And if you've ever been to the Adelaide Fringe, it's magnificent. People like go into the gardens, they Everywhere, party together. It? It's all intense. Like everything becomes a venue. And so those last two days, it was such a weird experience because we just had this major festival cancelled and realised the world was changing. Yeah. Whereas in Adelaide, they were no. like, we've still got two more days yeah, of this. Right. Let's just keep rolling through this. We'll see what happens after that. Well, I, as you know, lived there for 15 years. So I can say this against myself, but it's always been half an hour behind. Yeah. And it? It yeah, is. really. Let's be really honest. Uh, what I like about Adelaide's attitude was a bit like we've drunk a lot of Farmers Union iced coffee. I reckon that. <laughs> yeah, I reckon yeah, that's yeah, the COVID yeah. cure. Don't that was their hydrochloroquine. <laughs> oh, I love it. Now uh, let's move away from that fat yes. because well, this but, is well, a... it's an improv uh, show, Jim. Well, you know what that you, means? Oh. Yes. So uh, he just feeds off the will. Just feeds off the well, crowd. I do. We've talked to him about this before. I and know. He's, he's done improv shows his whole life. That is bloody difficult. There you go, mate. What do you do? You're one of those, eh? Yeah, I'm Baker, mate. Oh, oh plenty no. of dough don't, there. Don't you start rolling <laughs> into it. Boy. Don't oh you boy. start heading into that territory. How many, how many there, bakers do you think you're running into yeah. in your oh, show, no. by the way? I'd well. go through a few till I got... <laughs> yeah. What do you do, well, mate? Yeah, I'm a blacksmith. <laughs> uh, we'll move on. Right, eh? What no. do you do, mate? <laughs> I've been doing some of these in Brunswick Heads. 
Um, you know, on the northern, yeah. northern rivers, yeah. you know, yes. Mull and Bimby way. Yeah. Yeah, to say, when you do crowd work up there, Ooh. you're not getting, well, a couple of bakers, but not the sort you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. You've got a lot of jobs. There. Like, you know, when you're in crowd work, the other night there was an astrologer. There was a oh. dude who didn't vaccinate Ooh. his kids. You have some real interesting <laughs> topics to talk about. What do you go do there, just as a matter of interest? What, where do you clock in, the brain clock, clock in there, and what do you do? <laughs> With a, what, someone who doesn't vaccinate their kids? Oh, an no, astrologer. Yeah. <laughs> Um, oh, you know what? I, 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 he, <laughs> it's pretty easy because they're meant to be predicting what happens. So right. that's your, your flip there with the astrologist. Oh, You're right. going to talk. I wouldn't Bill. have gone that way. Yeah. What, you? Would you, what would <laughs> you have headed, Bill? So, uh, oh, well, f*** you, mate. Well, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> That's Bill. Actually, you know what? That is some of my crowd work as well, to be yeah, honest, Bill. Having done a lot of stage work with Fat over the years, uh, Will, what I find with him, if, if a lot of his stuff is tanking, and that's a pretty regular occurrence, he'll go to the F-bomb yeah, just yeah. to bring some left. Do you find that works? a laugh. Yeah, I mean, I'm, here's what I would say. Like, sometimes people say to you that, like, you know, Oh, swearing doesn't make it funnier, mm. but it, it, oh, does. it does. Like, you know, everyone who's ever done comedy will tell you it absolutely does. It's in the same way as jockeys say, I don't really want to use the whip. Yeah, yeah, I'd prefer yeah, to yeah. just get her across <laughs> the line without yeah. it. But yeah. sometimes, you know, you got to get the whip out down Spoiler. the downs. Now, we, we need to talk footy because I get the feeling you're going to be very excited. We've got uh, well, Luke Darcy appearing. Mm. Have we already spoken to Duke Today. Uh, no, he's going to come up a bit later. Right, I think. So yeah. I'll do get that. We got yeah. Luke Darcy coming up shortly, who I know has got a very firm hold, stiffy. Yeah. Yeah. About the Mitch dogs Wallace this year, and I reckon well. you're going to be the same. I, I, I mean, it's you know what? There's. I think after the year we had last year, and I mean, just everyone had last mm. year. I'm back in that idea of why not believe that they can do it. Mm. I think Bill's mob are still going to be very yes. hard to beat. I'll I don't think they got. I'm such a big Sean Higgins fan. I loved him at the Bulldogs, and I think if he can play and with your new recruits, I still think. I, I feel like Geelong have still got another year at having a crack at it. But I think the Tigers are going to be hard to beat. Yeah. But the Bulldogs, I mean, the midfield's going to be amazing. Yes. Like, we had essentially the greatest hard rubbish night of all time. Yeah. Collingwood, yeah. Collingwood yeah. were putting some stuff out on the corridor, and we drove by. And, yes, I love that. Yeah, we were looking around our stuff going, can we have that? Yeah. We're like, no, 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 not for sale. No, no, you can't. Not for sale. Got to be honest with you. So, so. Well, yeah, I'm interested in that. So, yes. Josh Dunkley yes. wanted to go, eventually stays. What does uh, Luke Beveridge do with him? Does he go, there's the forward pocket for you, young man. You're not telling me what I'm going to do with you. Or does he acquiesce? I see. I think the problem last year was like Dunkley got injured and didn't play a lot in the midfield. But if he's flying, I think he's in our midfield. Like, you know, he had 11, 12 tackles or whatever it was in the practice match the other day and had 32 touches. I think he's, he's the one that you know is going to be fine Mm because he's such a professional. He's such a, he doesn't want to dishonor himself by not playing good football, regardless of how he feels about the situation. So if you're ever going to hold on to one, he's the sort of one that you want to hold on to, I think, because you know... Mm -hmm. He's not going to like you know chuck the toys out toys much out of the loved. cart really, and much he? love, but they have got a very good midfield. Would, He's going to have to play forward a bit, Jim. Would you know Caleb Daniel if you walked in here? Under no, the, it, that's the thing about Caleb Daniel that I find the, the most fascinating thing of all time, because like he is like that. You know, in those teen movies where there was always like a girl, they were like, oh, she's a real nerd and she's got yeah. her hair up in a bun <laughs> and, and she's like got glasses oh, on. And then there's man. a scene in the movie oh, where she takes off the glasses oh, and she shakes out the hair and yes. everyone's like, she's Wowie. the most beautiful. Oh, yes. That's Caleb Daniel <laughs> after every game. But he takes <laughs> off that helmet and you go, look at that beautiful face. You tiny, yes. beautiful man. Yes. So, You're like the world's wow. most beautiful man, but smaller. <laughs> it's like the beauty in your face has sucked away your height. <laughs> I mean, I <laughs> love oh, him. See, I have him I as, the, him. Uh, as the uh, Ace Freely of football. Yeah. So Ace can walk around for the rest of his life and no one has a clue Incognito. who he is. And yet he's had this incredible career as a guitarist for Kiss. Well, I mean, you don't even like, I mean, with Caleb, you probably don't even see him a lot of the time. Oh. He just ducks by <laughs> under the eye height. So everything's fine. Uh, and interesting enough, the Bont hasn't signed yet. Yeah. Interesting that. It's, well, it might be interesting to you. It's terrifying. <laughs> right? I know. Yeah, the club sniffing around all year, Willie. <laughs> you know, you should be worried about that. Luke Beveridge, because if we have to offer Bont captain coach yes. to keep him at the club, we are willing to do it. <laughs>
What's that one, Jim, this year, the Bont? All right, Bill. No, no, Bont will stay. I'm very confident that Marcus will stay at the club. What, what, and think about the idea that he's going to play alongside Jamara Hagen mm. for the next, like, you know, 10 years. That Why would you want to go anywhere else? Love it. What you talking about, Will? That's the name of the show? Yes. Okay, so I'm doing Illegal. Bill, my story about going to Wagga oh, Wagga no, in again. Adelaide for yes. four nights and then one night of what you're talking about, Will, and then at the Melbourne International Comedy Festival the at the Arts Centre as well. rubber band one he's doing, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> and what you're talking about, not Willis, it's Will. Oh, I said that, Ooh. Will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. W-I-L. Only one L. No, no, that's Strange way to spell Will, but anyway. <laughs> Great Is seeing it? you, mate. Good luck with everything coming up. <laughs> Thank you. Tickets at comedy.com.au as well. It's the Rush Hour, JB and Bill, Triple M.